What's up? This is Copy Who. I'm your host, Paul, the producer. What are you laughing at? You think I'm funny? Hello, everyone. Welcome to the show. Oh, my flashing light bit did not work. There, there's the other flashing light. Kind of unhappy that it's like that now. Um, but I'm not sitting here alone today. I'm sitting with my friend Jesse. What's up, man? What is up, dude? You're here with me. It's not a normal recording for me, and I like that. Uh, there's something new, and it's called you. Yeah. Well, and it's been, what, probably 10, 12 years since we've been on well, yeah. a podcast? Because you're, you're familiar with my old show that I did. Yeah. Which I, was, was, I was a guest on Marijuana Radio, yes. I think, three Way back or when. four times. So yeah, welcome, man. And so you know what I'm and you're doing? Pull those up, and they're gonna be cringe. What are you talking about? Pull what up? Uh, those things from like 10, 12 years. Oh ago. no, I couldn't find anything super relevant to you. I did that with Mark <laughs> recently when he was in here. I know, I seen that. You saw those clips? Well, and a lot of that art on the back of the wall was mine. Oh, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah in the room there because yeah. you guys were always showing down in the art. Yeah. Uh, what do you call it in the? studio space that i had down there so here's what i want jesse okay i want um i want to hire someone as like an apprentice producer here to come in here and help me when i have guests because i have a guest like you in here now and you see me i'm hitting these buttons mixing video i don't want to be mixing video when i'm talking to people yeah you need a young jamie yes uh, a young jamie who's yeah, like, jamie who like like joe rogan has jamie spears jamie. No, the he has sister jamie. of Joe, oh Jamie, yeah, okay. Joe Rogan referring to that. Jamie. I thought you were a podcast nerd. And no, you well, I do Joe watch. Jo I watch clips of Joe Rogan, but I don't. Oh, yeah. um, you don't do the full. I, I watch it when it's interesting, and I respect Joe Rogan a lot because I think he is. Um, he's talking a lot of truth, and people are thirsty for the truth you these just, days. You just right? lost your whole left demographic. Uh, I I'm not kissing <laughs> anyone's butt, to be honest with you. Uh, I would like to win minds to make them rational. I'm not trying to keep right wingers i'm not trying to keep left wingers i just want to like deal in rational extremes oh no i, I don't think what does that mean i don't think the world works in rational rationality yeah anymore. you should move that microphone to the is opposite it, side of your face because it blocks your beautiful face where it is sitting there and you should better? think about putting your mouth very up close to it so that you're up inside people's heads like that up inside people yeah see heads. that like sounds this. that sounds lovely like that it sounds personal and I like it like that. So I, I miss the old uh, the microphones that you have. Oh, the thing that you can position. Yeah, I, you can position th those will get in a, in the way of people here. So we kind of yeah. have to like suspend disbelief in reality with what we're doing here. And yeah. and so if we have those, they'll take up too much space and they'll cover up our beautiful mugs as we're talking. Yeah. So you could have had this set up better. Yeah, so, dude, oh, many, thanks, dude. It's not good many, enough for you. How many freaking TVs do you have in this place? Oh, dear. My sister's made fun of me for being a TV hoarder. I've been a TV hoarder for quite a long while. And now we're in the, we're living in a um, mecca of amazing deals on TV. So I bought a lot of these TVs in this room used off of Craigslist. Plus, they don't cost very much new. So you buy like a new one, it's 50. A 50-inch TV could cost like 300 bucks, and that's not a big deal, I don't think, for what it is. How big is that one right behind This you? one behind me is 85 inches, this big monster here. Yeah. And that one I did buy new. <laughs> the one behind you, though, I got that a few weeks ago, a 65-inch, yeah. and uh, for 250 bucks. You need, you need to put one over here. No, no. You know what the problem is? I have a whole bunch of reflections in here now. And I'm not oh. fond of the reflections and things. And so I have to, like, for example, on this screen, I want to buy one that's a matted surface so that it doesn't reflect as much. But a 65-inch TV, which is what this is, is 1500 bucks, And that pisses me off. Can you do, it's can too you do the, bloody much. the rise thing? Uh, that is what we're going to do in a little while, yeah. You're spoiling it for everybody, okay. man. Of course. Why would? People? Did you see me rise the TV up on any of my clips? Have you yeah. seen that as yeah. well? Like. Yeah. I've been doing that. I brazenly stole that from someone who inspired this visual format to some extent. But mine is evolving and it's becoming different. And I don't make you pay for mine yet. 
this is not monetized yet because you can't monetize something with no discernible audience. Although yeah. there there are Liquid some people, Death, you should sponsor him. Most people uh, watching know me personally, and they are some people are astonished. I remember when you came in here before before it had all those TVs over there. You were already marveling at how much I have set up in here, right? Yeah, it it's pretty wild, but this this is just like a spare bedroom in your house yeah it's a 12 by 12 room i wish it were bigger i wish it went 12 more feet that way because then i'd put like a whole setup over there with a drum set and light it and make it look better than the fucking tonight show honestly i'm not kidding i want it to look better than the tonight i actually aspire to do better as one person than the tonight show with all of their fucking asshole writers and whatever they are oh we're striking and and then the asshole can't come on and do the show because he doesn't have his writers but if he's a real talent he could spend an hour sitting and talking to people and make it interesting you don't have to write anything you just spontaneously go on and you fucking do it but that's the retarded nature of mainstream fucking media and boring ass antique networks that think a certain way they are so stooped in fucking status quo well, bullshit well isn't that why long form podcast has gotten so popular yes it's like you look at all because because they're you, giving people what they want well and it's which like, is like real you discussions used to do, you used to do a long form podcast called yes. marijuana radio back that's right in the day. i did you remember it sir i i do and I think what you should do is you should just infiltrate on iTunes using your old channel. <laughs> oh, it's not there anymore. You're right. I For a long time after I stopped doing what I was doing, I actually had a feed in iTunes. On, on Apple TV, you go there, it would be like Marijuana Radio yeah. TV, and it was my TV feed. And I, I joke about it, but it's true. It was like audience abandoned. I just dropped it. I left it. That's crazy. Yeah. Because if you think about it, you started before Rogan. You started yes. before Tom and Bert. You started well, we were we were on a and more interesting trajectory, I think, whatever the hell it was. I don't know. I'm not saying I'm better than Joe but Rogan it, at all. But it was like, it was before legalization. Yes. We would the timing was the amazing. Studio. It was historic, and it's too bad that it's going to be forgotten and buried. But that's okay. Like, whatever. Um... I always thought that I had a certain vision that other people didn't share. We could have been big like Rogan. We could have had a, a path to getting on Sirius or Spotify at the time. But everyone, you know, just because I threatened to beat up another podcaster, everyone dumped me. <laughs> and well, he deserved it, too. So. Well, and don't forget, you got sober. I did. That That's a big point. Um, <laughs> and I bring it up all the time that even though that was a sad loss, the crashing and burning of marijuana radio... But I did get sober, dude. Got, yeah, yeah, it did. My personal life, life has totally. improved a lot. And even though right now marijuana is in my life at the moment, I don't anticipate that's going to last more than some days. It's a, what? it's an you occasional got, you got marijuana. In yeah, your life again. it's um, it's an occasional visitor to my visitor to my life, and um, right now it's in my life, and so, I don't, I'm so not liking just, it right now. So you're just sneaking behind the. Uh, well, I'm being honest the about it. Benches and. And kissing with Mary Jane. It's every specifically once in a while. certain times of day. Like I go to the Kava Bar now. I don't know if you've been paying attention that I'm I'm oh, always no. hanging out in this Kava okay. Bar every single day. And you should come hang out with me in there because it's a cool environment. Except so I go there and I hang out and usually I come home after and then I smoke. But yesterday before going, I smoked and I went in and I looked like all fucking disheveled and nuts and out of it. And everybody noticed, everybody could tell. And I'm kind of embarrassed because um, I don't want to be known as a stoner. And so I'm going to be quitting again. And I like <laughs> being lucid and I like being yeah. sharp. And, and I'm just, I, I uh, have a long track record of experiencing sobriety now. And I actually like it. I appreciate it. Well, yeah, um, it's like I haven't I haven't dabbled in a while, pretty much since the pandemic, because huh. I got I got you were bored at home and drinking, and everybody's yeah. like, 
yeah. like in downfall, personal downfall, because I, I personally hated the lockdowns. I don't believe in them. It's absolutely oh, criminal to do them. Completely. It's not legal. They're making up wild gibberish with but the excuse of fucking emergencies and I shit. Miss you them. miss them? What are you talking about? The only thing what I, does that mean? What do you miss about lockdowns? The only thing I miss about Not the it. free money. Like what? <laughs> the free money was <laughs> oh, no. fucking nice, Dude, man. Dude, come on. And then the really other thing... wrong to say that. The other thing that was... But it's like, let's be honest here. You had free money. You had zero fucking responsibilities. I could literally wake <laughs> oh, up. Oh, if only that could be life forever. I could just, dude. Yeah, if dude, only it could. Be, seriously, and that is what the uh, socialist dream yeah. is for us to just sit around in our fucking PJs. All and so day basically, and they trained games. you to want that. Oh yeah, man. And and it, I remember, man. I remember, uh, especially like when I. First, when it first went down, I was like, oh, my God, the world is fucking doom and gloom. They're fucking making us close up. And literally, like, being an entrepreneur, it's yeah. like, you're, Absolutely. it, it kind of, in a way, it kind of stifled my, like, fucking drive because it was like the, the plan. It was like the, the government plan, I basically think. said, hey, That's no, you want. can't have that fucking drive anymore. And then yeah. they started throwing. You're not essential. Out. Yeah, I'm not. I essential. hate how they threw that away uh, around like oh, yeah. people doing very important work to sustain their lives. You're not essential. You have to stop now. Right. And we're going to shoot everybody in the foot. And it was a total nightmare what we lived through. And to be honest with you, I don't think we talked much during that time, but I had periods of what I would call um, extreme struggle with it. I was mourning and I was in fucking serious. Oh, yeah fits of rage about what the government was doing at the time i i i, I, I don't want anything to do with lockdown granted i think we should have like a nationwide week where nobody goes and does anything maybe we should have a national week <laughs> off of everything a week off of everything. and now that that's something you can make an argument for but this yeah. is not um shut down for an indeterminate amount of, they fucking did it all through fraud true too and it's like oh yeah two weeks to kill the curve i knew fucking before they did that oh, it wasn't yeah. going to be two weeks i knew they were just fucking us i i was actually looking on my facebook uh like memories the other day yeah and like i i literally almost every day i think you were off facebook at that point again because you go yeah those spurts yeah but, I was. I was. Sitting I still there have going, that profile. And then I was like, 375 days into two weeks until the curve is over. And it was like I would like literally document it every fucking day. And it was like now it's showing up in my memories, and I'm like, holy shit, what kind of insanity were we living in? Where we had to. I don't shut... think we're better either. Dude. No, we're not. I think we're going further down the trajectory of weird, the quickening of well, nobody insanity. Wants, nobody wants to leave their houses anymore. Everybody has I do. been, but everybody's been attached to Netflix and their Hulu yeah. and their freaking Apple subscription. Dude, it's our downfall. It is. You guys, instead of fighting, you know, and well, it's, making the it's like country my, thrive, it's like stay at my home. Yeah, it's like yeah. At just my, entertain uh, yourself. Shh, entertain yourself. Take the free money, Jesse, and entertain yourself. And well, you like, like the free non- money. You admit you like the free I did. money. I like Who the doesn't free like money. free money? I got the free money, but I would have given that money back in a second. Like to say, fuck the lockdowns. I don't want to do that anymore. It was the most crazy situation we were living through in our lives. I still fucking hate it. That well, anyone it, would even contemplate it again makes me think, you're a criminal mind. You belong nowhere near government. I'm serious. I really fucking and, mean and it. Our, and, our, and our economy and everything really has not gotten better. It's gotten worse. No, they lie about it. Oh, like they, when you, they if you read Biden's a, tweets, it's like ugh. this is the best time of yeah. history, and it's like, wow, you're just lying to me every step of the way. Like I can't even believe it. I'm not a big Trump guy, but at least that guy didn't bullshit us. <laughs> like, oh my god, I can't believe you're saying that. So have you realized oh. something now? Because I I remember what a what a Trump negative you were. I'm sorry, I remember I mean, seeing I mean, that I'm even like turning against Alex Jones because he was so he was he's repugnantly pro Trump by the way yeah and I well, can't stand that about there um, there's qualities about Trump that I do not like me too um, he's ex- an extremely idiosyncratic him. idiosyncratic personality I get sick of listening I'm like oh my yeah. god shut up but when there, he's talking there, there's things about him that you know you kind of go holy shit man 
why did we pick this one 80 year old guy from this other 80 year old guy yeah you know and i don't think anyone that old has what it takes in this extremely rapidly changing world well, what technologically of, uh, everything what do you think of rfk jr um there are things about him I genuinely like, and I'm on his text mailing list. Yeah. I'm also on DeSantis's text mailing list. Really? And and it actually annoys me a little bit because I get texts and they start out like, Hey, Paul, it's Ron DeSantis. And he talks to me like we're bros and we're not yeah. bros. And um, so, but I text him back and he's never responded to me, but I say things like... Um, well, you know, like the biggest problem I have with Ron DeSantis What's is that? he's like a fake veteran. Like oh, like he's like I, I didn't know he was in he the has, military. I thought he was yeah, in like the. Uh, but he didn't go anywhere. He hasn't done anything, man. He's just like he. Oh, used, okay. He's been using that as so, his political thing, but it's like the guy never even left the states. So you, um, from what as I a veteran, researched. it sounds to me that you discern between veterans who really get the military experience. You go through some hell in the military. Yeah. And you earn your credibility that way, yeah. Instead of sitting at home, like doing a desk job or something, yeah. And well, because I know you've said you've been traumatized by the, by the shit you've gone through. You, oh. there's a lot of stuff you've done that you haven't even told me about. Yeah, and and honestly, I probably won't talk about it on a podcast. No, I'm not either. going to ask you because no, you you, you're you were shaming Jocko. me like don't ask people if they've killed anyone. It, no, like uh, I was asking yeah, people, that's... have you killed anyone? And you're like, you're not supposed to ask people. Yeah, that. you're not supposed to ask people. No, and, and I wasn't even trying to be rude. It's just like let's have a conversation. It's gonna be interesting. You know, and I do want to drag things out of you that are interesting, but I'm not here trying to humiliate you. Well, and you it's or like, and, and and one of the weird parts that uh, that a lot of people, you know, forget about, like my biggest problem on the PTSD spectrum, if you would call it, is this thing called uh, moral injury. So mm -hmm. basically, what moral injury is is you're told one thing and then you kind of find mm. out the other and you almost feel uh almost betrayed by yes. your beliefs so it, you end up doing things against your morals like i was in like i was a detainee operations guy yeah and we were led to believe that all these guys were terrorists and all these guys were the worst bad of the guys. worst and the yeah. baddest of the bad. Granted, yes, there were some of them. There was, you know, there was the guy that uh, ended up doing Benghazi. And we wrote multiple reports on this guy saying he he's already said when we let this guy go, he's going to freaking go and do some hurt shit. people. And he's going to hurt That's crazy. People. And then there were wow. other guys like there's that uh, Netflix movie, The March Rainian. That guy is legit. He was just a school teacher that was picked up by our government in Afghanistan because why? Because his neighbor wanted a hundred US dollars. You know, it's and you end up finding out stupid crap like that and you end up internalizing it and going, Oh, the government sat there and lied to me the whole yeah. time. And at the same time they're lying to you, that they're brainwashing you because the only way yes. the military works with is, everything, and that's what. Oh. There's so much I'd like to say about that, and that's today, why they dude. bring you in at 18. Because so when you're young and impressionable, oh, yeah. they can and just that, mold your brain that into brain anything is they so want. Moldable, and and that's why like a lot Scary. of people that come in at 25, 26, 27, they they start to like go. Ah, well, you know. Hey, now wait a minute. I'm this seeing through this little, illusion. Yeah. That's the part of growing up. Yep. And yeah. Dude, I think what they're doing in the military is similar to what they're doing to little kids in public school and I'm I'm repulsed by it. Oh. Like it's a brainwashing yeah. factory country from the early on get go. I've compared what public schools are today, what they were in Nazi Germany uh in World War Two. It's it, it's getting pretty bad. Um 'cause I've I've even noticed um I've even noticed from my own daughter's stuff. I be bet. Like, oh, dad, you can't say that anymore. Oh, I fucking hate that. I hear so many yeah. parents saying that, and that's what they're doing. They're training these little social justice warrior kids. But at the same time... Like, there are certain words I want to say. These, kids these days are, in, are starting to come into 
this uh, thing where they're discovering 2000s music. Like the stuff <laughs> that like is probably... God, give me some examples arguably, because after a certain point, I don't know what is legendary. Taylor Swift, is that like what you're talking no, about? No, Taylor what? Swift is what today. What are we talking about here? We're talking... It's today? T- we're talking people... She's been around for a while. People are... <laughs> yeah, but she's only been around maybe 15 years, right? I suppose. So, so she started like 2010-ish, whatever. I don't know. Um, but Like what What are you referring to specifically? I'm, Give me I'm some of these examples of music that came finding out about in. Limp Bizkit. Oh, okay. Corn. <laughs> like kids these are, are finding out about... I like oh, these all bands. good bands. But if you go back and listen to them today and, and actually like, especially since like, you know, Apple Music has that wonderful thing where you can like look up on your phone and be like... These are the actual lyrics. Have you ever done that? Yeah. And then you're like, dude, I look up the lyrics all the time. I thought it said this all the time. (laughs) There was like that one uh, Slipknot song uh, that I thought he was saying, "Doy bananas." It's not. What's he saying in there? I don't remember. (laughs) But it's not bananas. I thought he was like screaming about bananas for the longest freaking time. Yeah. Until like my daughter's like, that's not what it says dad look at this and she showed me how to like use the thing and i was like all this time it wasn't fucking bananas yeah i remember (laughs) in in a in the black sabbath song paranoid there's a lyric in there that some people thought ozzy was singing end your life but he's actually saying end joy life and it sounds a hell of a lot like um Sounds a hell of a lot like uh, end your life. So people mistake what words mean all the time in songs and stuff. Yeah, and I, and I think it, and well, and it's like, and now all these kids are like, they're they're listening to all this older stuff that like we as young adults listen to, and we're into, because if you think about it, like the apex of like offending people was probably like what 2007 2008 and then out of nowhere we were like we gotta pump the freaking brakes you mean from from oh, letting people from offend music. like online yeah. it was like it was wild like, west online say yeah. anything you want yep. fun free and then all of a sudden they're like nope now we need to yeah. start censoring banning shutting people down oh and and the bullying thing and it's like you know growing up in the 90s yeah and 80s it was all about bullying. Dude, it builds character it, living it through totally fucking does. a bullying experience. I'm not saying they should be allowed to do anything yeah. without accountability. There should be accountability. But fucking A, I, I can't imagine what I'd be like if I didn't go through those experiences when I was younger, when people were too hard and rough on me. Well, and like I was talking to my friend Rob the other day who uh, ended up spending like 20 years in the Navy. And mm. me and him, that's like, a long stint. It, yeah, and like that's I like career stint. Yeah, you're. It's a career yeah. at that point. Like if I would have stayed in uh, January, would have been my twenty years. So wow. it's like I'm like holy shit, I'm an old man now. But uh, so me and him were talking because uh, we're on a couple of these like um, you know Navy specific you know Facebook groups and stuff like that, and there's a meme page for our job which is the master at arms meme page well someone from that love your memes by the way oh dude you're a meme master i am i'm a meme lord but uh so there was there's this uh me there was these memes that were starting to pop up about someone that me and him knew and i'm like what the you know what the hell's going on here and he goes oh uh, she apparently was doing her job basically and told some kid to like put his cover on or some shit. And she posted about it on Facebook. And then someone from that like meme page sees her thing and goes, Oh, she's trying to be a badass. Da, 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 da. Basically, like going, I'm going to fucking troll her and fuck with her to no end and me and him are like going this is fucking ridiculous because then the meme page turned into we're just gonna go after this one girl funny enough she thinks it's hilarious she doesn't give a fuck why because she was born in 1982 
She oh because she she was skin trained skin not right because exactly. she grew up it's like generational back cultural in the day now. oh yeah when you know we were doing but if this would have happened to you know a 25, 20 year old right now they'd be they whimpering like fucking, a little bitch they would have took a gun out fucking blew their own fucking head off yeah I because, hear you and and I think that's where like a lot of our our suicide issues are coming from is we're just babying people dude it, it's not even years. like for a good purpose the agenda really is isn't. to make people fragile and weak and yep. stupid and frail so that they can't defend this country honestly i think it's that rot within that is threatening this country and the military and government institutions all of them well and right now i feel like in, in a lot of ways the military is so fucking soft right now oh like, man that's part of what I wanted to ask you about. What it's becoming is not what it was. Like, um, it is not a stalwart, solid thing right now to me. It's um, it's evolving into this perverse social experiment. And I think that agenda is purposeful because you can't conquer the military militarily. So you have to infiltrate yeah. it by fucking up minds and warping the minds of people and and purging people out and ideologically making people more extreme, more brainwashed. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. With, with the social agendas they have in it, but, the d diversity and the well, equity and the inclusion, all that stuff. Oh. Not good for a military um, that needs to be strong for the well, reasons it needs to be in, strong. In the military, everybody is one. That That's one thing yeah. that, like... Is that the way it feels now, though, do you think? No. Because no. there's, there's something there, just perverse about it now. There really is too many individuals. And if you go on TikTok, Instagram, Reels, whatever the fuck. They shouldn't even be allowed to do that in I, the military. I, go out there and... Right. Some of these vi things that are going viral when you're in the military, it's like they're compromising the purpose and the safety and the strength. Well, and and I've noticed like there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of military recruiters that are getting on there now. And they're doing like these, this is the, you know, these TikToks to try to get kids into their freaking thing. And right. it's like, one, it's like, I, I get your agenda is to, you know, get all these kids into the military. Because right now, nobody wants to go in the military. We're talking about doing a draft again. And I hate to say it, if World War Three pops off. Dude. The only thing saving us is the fact that our technology is so far superior than any other developed nation. I hear what you're saying. Like that that's the only thing really saving our asses right now is that's why they're infiltrating it socially, I think. Yeah. Is because it it undermines it. You have to subvert it from yeah. within divide people and and fuck them up in the head. Well, in in a way, it's like you know, there's almost too much individualism when it comes to the military right now. Everybody wants to be a military influencer. Everybody wants to be a bro vet. And it it's An almost, influencer. Yeah, it's like well, they want to be a military influencer. So uh, and that would a, seem to undermine the purpose of being in there and being a cohesive unit. It Yeah, it is. Like, I remember there was... Uh, I remember when I was in... There was a girl who was a legit model. Like most, probably one of the most beautiful women you would ever freaking meet, right? And nobody ever, nobody ever knew about it. But the minute someone found out because of the wonderful thing called the internet started to become even more of a thing. And when you're on night shift, what did she do? What? People get bored. And when yeah. people get bored, they start Googling things. So what does people start doing? They start Googling people's names. So they huh. Google her name and go, holy shit, she has a swimsuit calendar. Okay. Holy shit, not so she bad has so all... Far. Not so bad so far, right? Well, I want to see it. <laughs> this comes out. I'll show you Dude. later. Um, she's still a model to this day. And she actually did 20 years in the Navy. Uh, me and her are still really good friends. But she married? No. No. She's she's completely no. sing, single, lives in Texas. Um but she's a little bit more uh What do you want to say? Oh, eccentric? 
she she's very like given into this whole like religion Jesus thing okay. lately, which I'm like okay that's whatever. okay. <laughs> eh. uh, I mean like okay so you're not into Christ but <laughs> I like Christ I don't find much fault with Christ. Uh well and and. Yeah, you, you want to go institutions and religions the are a separate thing, of but religion the philosophy of Christ that I read in the Bible, I almost consider the closest thing to perfection. The philosophy of religion is a great tool for dying people. Yeah. Well, it's also to give us hope in life. I, I invest in Christ because it's a form of hope. You want it to be real. It yeah. would be wonderful if it, were, if it were all real, wouldn't it be? It would be. I don't be. see how it could... What's the net loss if Christ is real? But also, what's the net loss if it's just over at the end? Um, I still think if there is no God and there's no Christ like we're talking about right now, I think that it still provides a moral foundation that serves the world well. Um. Whatever it is, the foundation of society being Judeo-Christian specifically, the gods of Abraham or whatever, or the god of Abraham, whatever you want to oh. call it. I do know that I want to go to this next phase of the show, which is one of my favorite parts of the oh, show. Oh, to rise the TV? Yes, the ascension. Have uh, Have you been looking forward to this part? Oh. This is the part you should have looked forward to. This is the part that is on Instagram. Uh, yes, I have cut this into the show, yeah. into the, my... Into my post. I, I, I don't know where the rest of it goes. What, what are you talking about? <laughs> oh, it goes on YouTube. Oh, you, are yeah, we I on have YouTube? I have a long form YouTube oh, channel. Are we on and YouTube? And it's in my right description. Uh, no, we're not. We're not streaming live. Oh, okay. It's not a live streaming so we show can cut as of yet. Well, yeah. If you if you're like, oh my god, I said something. I hope you don't say that okay. at the end because um, makes me extremely nervous. So right now I'm gonna go to the rise, Jesse. You've got to bear with me Duh. while I go. So we're gonna go like so. Hopefully this will work properly. Here we go. Get ready, man. Oh my god! Rise. Do you see what's happening, Jesse? It's rising. This TV is going up! For you! And for everyone out there! And I'm not a normal person. It's true, I'm not a normal person. But I love this part of the show. It's glorious, Does it this rises? moment. Because it rises? Yes. I stole this from someone who knows who he is, and he fucking deserves it. Woo! And it is my gratuitous moment. It's, um, what do you call it? It's gluttony. It's, it's media coffee. gluttony. You know it's awesome. I think you know. Oh my, I'm, on, I'm completely on the wrong screen here. See, I need someone mixing video for me. Man, this is no joke. I love that part of it right there. This is my money shot. See the reflection in this TV now? Yeah. If you look up there, I see that TV behind you in this TV, and I don't like that. I'm not a big fan of that aspect, Jesse. You, you know what you could do? What's that? You could get some uh, matte uh, screen protectors. Yes. That, it's, oh, I saw how you can put those on there, but then it looks like shit, and it just blurs <laughs> it all up. And it does. As you it kind of takes away the uh, HD effect. As you can see, I'm kind of going for um, the best here. Yeah, it blurs yeah. it up, and it makes it look shitty. So we can't do that. But now... Like, I, I have one on my iPad for drawing. Oh. Yeah. But it does. It makes that screen look like shit. So I, I collected a few things here I just want to look at, and I find them... They're cute, and they're sweet, and I, um, I deliberately, purposefully... You know, I, I wrote your wife. And I was like, hey, what can what the hell can I I didn't get much. But I was like, what the hell can I do with Jesse here that'll be amazing or something? And she's just like, I don't know. And I was, I don't know if she told you, but I'm like, make him dress up. And um and uh I put on a collared shirt for you. Okay, I guess that's yeah. nice. You look nice, okay. Yeah. I like that you have the hat. You're you're sporting a look, if you know what I mean. I think I gotta get better light on that side. I think you could be illuminated oh, better. It would look so much better. Yeah, if I threw more light on there, you need it would be cool. Maybe you have sort of a backlight there, and mm -hmm. it's just not as good as this side. I don't think this side. I've been working on dialing in like yeah. TV, and it's a work in progress. You need another my ring friends light right here. So this is you right here, and I'm gonna move this out a little bit. Another ring light. Oh my god, this one already blinds the shit out of me. So I don't know about that. So here we are. This is you being honored at a an Avs game or something, yeah. right? Yeah. And so, oh, whoa. 
God, I hate that about this. I was supposed to fix that before today. So I'm going to play this. And you were like, no, get here at 10 a.m. Okay, I'm not hearing the sound. Is there sound to this? Oh, there is sound. Crapola. Oh, my God. Oh. And then on top of that, my friend Emily is up in the stands taking this video. She's moving. About. Oh, yeah. And there you are all young. See see that um, fancy Super formal young. you that was standing up on the... Uh, Dude, that was so... You had like that suit thing on and you had the little, uh, the military hat or whatever. That's what I thought you might show oh, up the like Dixie today. Oh, the Dixie cup? Yeah. I don't even know where that is. Dude, I, um, the Dixie cup, the one you were, oh, right there. Oh, the, the VFW hat? Yeah, I think yeah. that's cool. Yeah, man, there's definitely a huge difference in you, um, from 20 years ago. That little young man we see oh, in this God, picture yeah. here, that's trippy. Yeah, that was... Good Conduct, it says. Yeah, what does it say a, up there? Good Conduct eight. Medal, National Defense Medal. Yeah. So you're King Super's honorary hero. Yeah. Will they just let you in when the food riots start, King Super's? <laughs> I don't want to No, insult and, them. You, and you know what? It, what like, you, so King Super's, I guess, buys the ticket yeah. that you sit in, and then they have these, like, basically ad that says you're the hero of the game, and they put it on the back. Of so your it was pre-planned. That wasn't a surprise. Oh, th yeah, this was a hundred. Like they're like, hey, we want to honor you during that, and you'll oh, yeah. be ready for it. I knew about like it that. in God September, and then when I looked at the date, and they were like, "Who yeah. nominated you for that?" Like, did uh, someone say, "Hey, yeah, my buddy my Jesse, VFW post uh, okay. nominated me for it for all the hard work I do over there." Yeah, it seems like you've. Uh, I don't know. What do you call it? You've risen up in the ranks over there to become much yeah. more important, right? Yeah. Uh, it's crazy you're still down in that Santa Fe art district. And I, and I'm so divorced from it now, I, like completely. I love that neighborhood. Yeah. Like, it is, it is one of the, like, the coolest places in Denver, hands down. But it is starting to become a little bit too... It, like it's starting to lose its authenticity in a way and hmm. thankfully where my vfw is it's like it's been one of those things that uh is keeping it like it's keeping it hood still you know it's like it's not too fancy yet we haven't like spent a bunch of money i that. hate how they got rid of the parking down there and um, what oh, else God, do I the hate? The streetscape thing is the worst. Scape thing? You mean like where they don't let people park on the side yeah, anymore? They're, yeah, they're calling it the streetscape project. And basically they had to... No, they're just trying to force cars out of cities. Oh, they're cities, trying to force is what they're doing. cars that's out of cities. That's the real agenda. 100%. And honestly, that's one of the worst things that I've been seeing is we've been seeing a lot less um, people coming down to our VFW post four events because nowhere to park no parking. dude when i go down there i think to myself like where the hell do i park now yeah well, i well, realize i had my own parking behind the building <laughs> right. when i was down there but they have they have hurt the community by doing that it serves oh, yeah. no positive purpose if you want it to be a vibrant community well, where people and come down and enjoy take, themselves like, two three four five spots in front of a building that has had those spots for years mm-hmm and then you're like, oh, well, we're just, you know, we're going to widen the sidewalk. And it's like, okay, cool. But w you're widening the sidewalk for one day a month. And that is first Friday. Other than that, the place is still a ghost town. Yeah. Every other day. Well, I can't really say that right now because it is starting to look up. And we've actually been looking into being open other days than first Friday. We've been doing the third Friday thing. That's Dude, still that's still what a I don't waste understand. Like, you can sustain an amazing night like first Fridays down there, and if I had that kind of business down For there years. every day, yeah, then I would still be in business down there. Oh yeah, but 100%. it just and so it's an extraordinary thing that happens once a month, and then it's gone. And I don't even understand why it can't happen twice a month and people enjoy it. Right. Why isn't it, it good enough for twice a month? Or every day in a city full of millions of people? It like boggles why? my mind. I do not understand why it can't be an every Friday thing. Yeah. Because it is the perfect. That good. That's fun. It is That's the perfect, perfect date night. 
Yes. It's an I agree, dude. You know, it's an early evening event. You know, you're there from five thirty to nine o'clock. You can take your girl out to dinner. You can go and mm-hmm. look around at all the different art stuff. You could buy some gifts for people. You could buy some gifts for your girl. It's a great you know novel thing to do. It doesn't come along all the time. It's a special thing for people to do. That's why I wanted yeah. to move my business down there in the first place. And it and it you know, and it's constantly changing. It's, you know, with, you know, artists moving around to different galleries and stuff and new artists coming mm-hmm. in. It's, you know, every time you go down there, you're going to see something new. And I think that's why almost, that's why it is only one time a month. Because it it probably can't change enough in a month. But it can change. Disappointing. Enough. It And it really is. But... It's like they've in lost a big a... city like Denver. It should be able to sustain way more than that once a month. Well, I remember when you came down and you were like, "Holy shit! When did they build all these freaking condos behind you?" And I was like, "Oh yeah, this is literally like that used to be our parking lot. Like we used to be." Dude, I'm fed up with the dense lit shit going on. Well, we don't need more density in cities. No. It's not healthy. It's not good for people to be no. compacted into. It makes no sense, and I know they want to make everything uh, like private car free eventually. That's the goal. That's where we're going. Yeah. That's the way the global cabal talks about Los Angeles. By 2030, there will be no cars in Los Angeles. What's the what are the implications of that? No cars in Los Angeles. Well, it's when like, you know what yeah. Los Angeles is like, and it's like they built these condos and they put them so close together, and then these idiots buy these condos for half a million dollars, and then they have you know, a $70 or a $70,000 Tahoe. And then, yeah. and then even, nowhere to park. And then they can't even That's park what's ridiculous. They don't even garage. require parking when you're putting in a no. specific condo. You should have they a have certain a freaking... amount of parking required for that no. to be put in. Park. I know, I know. They got a garage they want, under I know. their thing, and then they can't even get their fucking car. And I'm saying they want the to squeeze cars yeah. out of the city, period. That is the eventual goal. Oh, yeah. They need to be told to go to hell. Or I mean, like, they want the little so. smart cars that are ran by a battery. Yeah, and and you uh, have to use your phone to operate it. Mm-hmm. And so this is like the end of autonomous movement, really, is what we're talking about. Well, did you hear here. about the kill makes switch? Me very uncomfortable. Yeah, oh, yeah, in new cars. Oh. It's like, gee, why are you trying to do that? Guess what? Every, last year, the, the encroachment is always toward yeah. taking liberty and freedom away with everything, dude. Well, it's like, I want to buy the new uh, the new Land Cruiser when it comes out. And then I'm done. I'm oh. never buying another car again. I, I'm feeling that way right now. That I, I mean, I have even the means to buy a new car, and I'm like, I just don't give a shit about cars. Yeah, it's, but have like, you doesn't seen make that me new happy. Land Cruiser? No, I'm not saying I don't like cars, but it's just like, see, if you did have some, they don't make you happy, like, dude. That won't make be you like, happy. Pull it up. No, you you have the what new... is what is that? It was a Toyota Rav Four. Yeah, that's an awesome car. I think those are great for what it oh, is. It's an I, amazing car. Man. I love that thing. Compared to like but, living 150 years the, ago, I want the Land Cruiser, the new one. I get it. People yeah. like their cars. Yeah. I just don't feel like I need one. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I, when I bought the car that I have 10 years ago, I actually go, this won't make me happy. I know it won't make have me happy. And lo and behold, I'm though? not happy. Yeah. Oh, you mean, are you talking about goddamn a four cylinder <sighs> piece of shit? Dude, it has a four turbo. cylinder. Oh, fucking A. That car's not even going to last because it has a turbo. Put a fucking turbo in a V6. Yeah, but that taco that you have right now is slow. It's What are you talking about? It hauls ass. It's a (laughs) four-liter fucking engine. Their piece of shit right now has the one they sold, 3.5-liter V6. What a piece of shit. Why would I want to buy a car with a smaller engine? The V6 4.0 liter that I have is fucking awesome. I fucking love it, dude. It, what are you even least, talking about? At least Toyota is developing gas engines. Yes, they're the uh, la- they're, they're the last company yeah. that's actually dude. Like they're taking note and they're trying to make the fuel economy better because they know as well as me and you know that it's going to be ten dollars a fucking gallon in the next five years. Oh, oh yes, I do that's believe it's, it's going. going to, to it may be worse cylinder. than that. It may be worse than and that. And that's why it's going to a hybrid model. Because the only way they're going to keep gas engines and keep their reliability, oh, fucking hybrids, is those fucking to hybrids develop their fr- that new two point five liter that they're making. Man, that for thing is two point four. It's a two point four hybrid motor that they're on making. what car? 
they're, they're putting it in the uh, Land Cruiser. When you and say they're putting it in the see, Tahoe, when you say they're putting those it. big cars, I'm like, are they fucking crazy? Two point four liter. No one wants that, dude. Dude, I want a combustion engine in in my yeah, car. Yeah, it makes. I want. It makes. I would consider going and power. buying a new Tacoma if it were a V8. <laughs> uh, but they want to put a oh, they, four cylinder. In it? That's been fucking an eight bullshit. Cylinder in a Tacoma since like what the first generation. There was never an eight no. cylinder in a oh, in yeah. a Tacoma. That was only the that uh, pisses me off. That was only the uh, the Tundra. Okay. Well, I have something I want you to react to, man. Oh. With me, I want us to make commentary um, on this woman. Is it uh, ticky tocky? It's a TikTok video that I'm oh, going to put up yeah. on the screen here. Well, hold on, honey. And it is a gorgeous woman, but I I, I want to get your take on this, okay? This woman who is genuinely attractive. I want to blow this up full screen so it doesn't go bopping around on me over here. This woman is an OnlyFans sex worker. Do you know what that is, Jesse? An only, OnlyFans? You know what women do on OnlyFans, I assume. Uh, I assume you My do. wife is watching. No, I have no idea. Excuse me? If my wife is watching, I have no idea. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I thought for a second you were saying that your wife... I, for a moment, I thought you were going to say your wife doesn't, and I was going to be like, no! Uh, I'd have okay. a lot more money if we did. Um, maybe you would. And, so this and, is an OnlyFans worker woman here. And, good uh, for so her. Listen to the... <laughs> yeah, God bless her. Good for her. God bless her soul. You know uh, what? Actually, Get so, that bag, sis. I want to uh, share this with you so that we can react to it because I have a, a, an opinion about this. Okay. I had had this subscriber almost since the beginning. He had spent around 2000 Australian dollars, bought every single thing. Yeah, that that's I sent like $2 American. We chatted every day on there. I and mean, he had a very specific username that was not a like, automatically generated one or anything like that. And an account with the same username had viewed my TikTok profile when I could see who was viewing it at the time. Um, and yes, yeah, so I had the exact same username and it said from your contacts mm. and my heart just sank into my stomach and I was like, I don't who have that many phone her, in Jesse. my phone. I know who this person is and he has spent this much money on my account, seen everything. And I just sort of went into super detective mode and I said, I need to find out who this is. I went through all of the contacts in my phone. I crossed out anybody who had... Who do you think she's going to discover was looking at it's her? her fucking dad. Well, close. A mom? established TikTok account not and mom. crossed out Definitely the people that mom. said invite to TikTok and I was left with six names. It was a couple of guys she from school. She reveals it momentarily. One girl from school, someone's mum, and my stepdad. And uh, I had just thought, okay, it could be those guys, but I feel like they would have told me, like they always message me happy birthday. It's not going to be them. It's not going to be my girlfriend. It's not going to be this mother. It has to be my stepdad. Wow. So I <laughs> you went like out on a limb and messaged that the account on OnlyFans, you. and I said, I it know does. who this is. And he responded saying, who, question mark, babe, you don't know. And I then hit back pretty quickly, and I said, you need to tell her before my sister and I do. And with Her being your mum? Yeah, being my mum. And within two minutes, I got a text message from my stepdad saying, Tay, are you free to talk? So uh, I actually do want to discuss this because... To me having my early whoops. fans... Um, so I'm going to close out of that. <sighs> so it's her stepdad. And I'm going to go out on a limb and defend the stepdad. What do you think of that? I'm taking the side of the stepdad. What do you think of that? Come on, buddy. Is that wrong? Uh, I don't think it's wrong. No, uh, no because actually, they're not, they're not really related. They're... So that's, that's part of it, too. And what I want to tell you about Mr. Stepdad... Isn't is, that the... Uh... Actually, she's the one doing the sex work. She's in the business of, like, trying to yeah. tempt men to sin and be bad and be naughty. And so he reacts like a normal man. And because there's this relation on the side, and she divulged what she was doing. So, like, naturally, I'm defending the stepdad, okay? So let's say both people are in a state of sin. And it's true. They're both sinning on some level, I guess. Sort of, maybe, if you believe in that. And so... He's automatically bad for wanting to see that beautiful woman naked in sexual situations. I want to see the mother. That's the picture I want to yeah. compare her to. Let's let's see the mom. Do you got do you got the research? No, I don't know who the mom is, but oh. are, uh, do you forgive the stepfather for what he has done? Yeah. Is it okay? I mean, imagine the self control it would take if it's like, <sighs> "There's my stepdaughter. She's gorgeous." 
Uh, and, but but you know, there is like I'm attracted to the daughters of women my age who have daughters, you know, in, in their mid twenties or whatever. Yeah, I just I admit that. Yeah, and so I'm supposed to like well, pretend. That's kind of how we all are wired. Anyway, we are right? wired that way, and I'm not gonna shame men for being attracted to a woman like that. What I am saying though is she's a sinner. She's yeah. doing and. She's doing a sex job that a lot of people regard as sinful, and it's a sin to tempt others to sin. Do you see what I'm saying with that rationale? And so, um, but I like sinning. Don't we all, dude? We're all built to yeah. want to sin. Yeah, that's 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 one of the reasons I don't really care for religion. Aren't you Aren't you wanting to see more of her work? I want to see more. I, of I her want work. to see. Yeah, let's. Uh, like, looks pretty good to me. Let's copy who her. <laughs> I don't know her actual name. But by uh, golly, um, I, I, I've never, to be honest with you, I've never purchased or paid to see anyone on, on OnlyFans only fans. at all, ever. And I, I think is, I don't even know if that's the only way you can look at what someone's doing. I don't know if they have free content available on there or anything. I've, I've I'm not into, over there at I've all. I've looked into doing it myself. What? Oh, yeah. Like, it, like what are you talking about? Like, almost like, like not in a sexual sense. Uh, yeah, like almost like a trolling, like oh sense of like, if you want to see my memes, you got to like go to my OnlyFans. Like, I, I, I think it's a, I think, because you can a, broadcast anything there. Yeah, you could broadcast anything there. But it is and, renowned and but known it's all for by fucking pornography, dude. And it's all by a paywall. And there, there's a benefit, a utility to that. Yeah. But then, People hear OnlyFans. My first thought was imagining you naked, which I don't want to imagine. Yeah. That's not right. But, you know. Yeah, uh, your butt. I thought of your if, butt. If I could get that bag, dude. I. Well, people are making obscene if, amounts if, of money. If the roles were reversed and right. us ugly dudes were the thing that the whole world wanted versus hot women. Okay. If hot women acted like <laughs> creepy dudes oh, man. and dudes were regarded as hot women are now. You can't tell me you wouldn't do an OnlyFans. I would be fucking spreading no, or I, showing it all. I am um, um I was thinking about this cuz I heard a uh, this dude named Ryan Stone who's in the manosphere talks, he writes books about intersexual dynamics, all this jazz and stuff. He said that he would cuck out for like 2 years of I think if he could if he could make a million dollars a month, he'd do that for two years and just vanish. Uh, and yeah. and and I just think I wouldn't do that, dude, because I'm I struggle to be principled, and I want to be principled in in the end. And so if you sell out, you're selling out God, you're selling out everything. Um, you know, it's hard to justify. But if you're not religious, <clears throat> if you're not religious, you might be able to be at peace with yourself doing that. Yeah. So you would. Would you, Jesse, go on OnlyFans and um, oh, if plunge could, a dildo into your bare ass every I, day for two years if you got a million dollars a month to do it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Lord. Yeah. Hold on. Where's Say the yes loop? on camera. You say, where, where is you're the saying, loop, man? You're, oh, man, you're going deep on yeah. this, man. Like, dude, Man of honor. A million Jesse, dollars, dude. What are you doing a here? Million yeah, no. do a million dollars a I month? realize how hard it is to make a million dollars, but you still... No, okay. So you say you're not religious, but but all you gotta do like is like you still want to live masturbate. a life of honor with your body. But you just gotta masturbate in front of a camera and put it on the <laughs> internet like everybody else does, and you make a million dollars. I'm Come giving you a free on, pass bro. to do that. If you if you can really make a million dollars, if you can make a million dollars jerking I, away, I don't think I uh, I don't see myself doing that. I don't see anybody paying. Even for if it. I were young and gorgeous, I don't see myself doing that. Oh. If I have the same character. Oh. As a person, that that guy in all those pictures, he could have done it. And so, as a father too, like I'm not going to get graphic or weird or anything, but you don't want your daughter to do that, right? No. But yeah, that's where, so there. That's the normal moral but that's outlook where it, coming out. But you want to protect her comes, from that? Why? Even for a million dollars a month, would you want her doing that? And I'm I'm, I'm not trying to put you on the spot know. here. I don't know. Embarrassing. Don't I'm just know. saying, like we don't want our kids to do that, and no. so that moral standard um extends to us yeah but if uh, you're like put it a this way. but a million dollars put it this way if my kid okay basically like later on like 
she's 25 whatever the fuck right at this time says dad i need to tell you something i have an only fans i'm getting that bag blah 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 okay cool whatever huh. and I, w- I would just ask are you happy are you healthy doing this is this something you want to do and if and if it's something that she's making a rational decision at and saying you know this is what i want to do i will support it because i'd like to say that i'm evolved in a way yeah. but do i want her to do it no <laughs> but, that's evolved but evolved dad yeah but if she goes hey you know i i'm making money hey i bought you that new freaking land cruiser you wanted <laughs> you know oh my goodness am i gonna be like ah oh, you fucking sinner no i'm not because i'm not that uh i'm not a fucking hypocrite mm. because i know in my heart of hearts if i fucking if the if the fucking thing was switched and I was the hot woman that could get paid a million, three million dollars, I would fucking do it in a heartbeat. Hmm. Well, I think that's a fascinating perspective. I'm not judging you because um, I've done crazy things, man. Things but it's that like, I will not divulge you, here. But it's like you do things for money all the time, right? Like you bought a bunch of fucking TVs to eventually make money doing this right sure sure but it's not i still want to honor god with my body does that make sense dude in a way but but are you honoring god with your wallet right now um oh sometimes no dude sometimes honestly you know there's something in the bible about how um how spending there's a saying spending money on christ says like you won't make it into heaven a rich man has an a more difficult time easier time making it into the pinhole of a grain of sand or something than making it into a heaven as a rich man i'm paraphrasing christ right now and so dude i i'm at a stage in my life where you'd probably be appalled at how much money i dropped on people i'm like that start person looks like they're not going to be able to eat today and i dropped 20s on people so why aren't you doing it at the strip club um, yeah, because I'm I'm not wanting to reward people for lives that I think are not their. Like I was in a strip club re- club recently, oh. and I thought to myself how bad I felt being there, and I wasn't up close to them with my face in their junk or anything. Which but I felt club? like I should have brought Which up strip club. Um, Larry Flint's Hustlers Club in Las Vegas. That's oh, where it was. Okay. I thought I should have brought up Christ when I was there. Oh my god! You think that's laughable, but it's it like. Is. No, it's not. It's totally not, man. Um, <laughs> and then you, and then you, and find, I'm not even. I'm not the proselytizing one, type of Christian. And then you dude. find that one lady that's like, she's way more Catholic than you, and she's just stripping? like stripping. Oh yeah, you'll you'll, no, you'll I, find them. I was. They're I had difficulty there. there. I looked in their eyes, and they. You could tell they were fatigued and they were tired from. That's all from the type of like yeah. drugs they yeah, were doing constantly. Coke. So. Yeah. I could feel it from them that there was this um, desperation, and that that really disturbed me, dude. Well, and so well, in a way, it's come on, like, what's the difference between that and someone that serves food at tables? Um, well, because sh- it's, really, it's a, it goes back again to honoring shitty... honoring God with your body. Yeah, but everybody does, does all these shitty like you're jobs honoring you're not dishonoring God money. when you um, serve food to a table. You know what I mean? Yeah, but come on. The way people have been treated these days, fucking, you know, you, they they almost have it worse than the strippers do. At least the strippers, you know, taking away a couple thousand dollars at the end of the show. They're making more money for their humiliation, yeah. but they're yeah. having to, like, sell their bodies to do it. Yeah, but isn't the server selling their body by, you know, carrying those giant fucking trays and all that stuff and then they're well, they're not walking around their they're not walking around naked doing it and they're yeah, not but they're like, still ruining their bodies. And, well, uh my sinful part of me, I'm not necessarily judging you because sinful Paul thinks that um it would be better to have prostitution legal. I don't think it's the government's business to come in and say you're not allowed as two people to agree to have this transactional I think it thing. should be. It, it should be legal, I think. And so I think there's a lot of things. I that could get tempted into tempted into that, but I'm still saying it's sinful. And so 
do I want society to allow something that I, but then where do you draw the line with everything in society, everything you're doing and promoting and putting on TV? How do you draw that line? You either got to have, um, everything is kind of fair game or uh, nothing's allowed or what? No, I, I think the line is pedophilia. Oh, that is the line. And I, I'm glad you brought that yeah, up. Yeah, like, like fuck corrupting those guys, children. Throw them in a fucking yes. fire. Adults should be able to do what adults want to yeah. do. And if you're, but, that's but the if other you're thing. corrupting children, I have a real problem with that. What the? What is an adult in our society anymore? Is it 18? Oh my is god, 21? Because apparently you can't be like you can't vape. You can't freaking. Uh, We're drink in alcohol. the land of the juvenile. Uh, the prolonged juvenile is contemporary America. I used to say that about myself when I was younger. Being a juvenile for so long, having it prolonged. I sh if I had been the mature I person I should have been at 25 or 30, there are giant mistakes I made in life that I never yeah. would have made. Dude. Well, well, like in a way, like I'm pretty sure we'd both look back like 10 years ago, 12 years ago, 15 years ago, and go, oh, man. If I would have known what I know now. Well, I often wish I matured sooner. And so I think our country deliberately, purposefully makes us like immature, stupid, juvenile dipshits. And it's the way I joke around here, too. I'm not saying I'm so much better because I'm here. I say a lot of stupid shit for a laugh. I talk about you putting a dildo in your butt for millions of dollars a month. And you actually affirm to me that you would do that. Yeah. <laughs> Tells me so much about you, dude. I, I didn't expect I'm to pull whore. that out of I you. I like today. money. Oh, my goodness. You're a whore. Yeah. I have uttered those words. I'm your I, whore today. Yeah. I, it, I've i done Good so God. much stupid shit for money. Yeah. You know? It's like fucking hanging off a side of a building to do a fucking yeah. mural i'm not pretending like, to be super good when i was younger i wanted to for, um for like a thousand bucks what did i do oh i put up a web page this was literally like 1980 98 99 i bought a disc with with pornographic images where oh. i could where i could take those images and post them online because i wanted to see i didn't know we'd get and, this uh, out of Paul. so yeah hey i had oh, i briefly he was a sinner. for a brief moment in time i put a page with a gallery of pictures that had uh pornographic images and i was like oh my god ten thousand people saw this in a day and i all i was seeing was dollar signs yeah and at the time it caused so much strain when I admitted to a girlfriend that I had that I cared about what I did, it like um, she hated it. Like she was uh, up in arms about it. Can you see what I'm saying? How a woman wouldn't like that. And so I did that. And I did wind up taking it down. Um, and I'm glad I didn't go down that path in life. But I, I was being a pornographer, dude. I yeah. was briefly, for a brief moment, a pornographer. But, but in that instance, were you, uh, were you paying those models? No. See, I was just thrilled to have, to have the some, traffic online to have some and be like, "Oh my god, porn!" I no, I saw like I got ten thousand hits in a day on this page, yeah. and maybe there's a way to make money doing that. Right. That's honestly what I thought. Well, it's like back in the wild, wild west days of the internet. So I thought if I set up a page with naked sex shit going down on it, I could get enough people clicking on things and getting payment generated from clicking on things, yeah. and that's what I was trying to do. So I guess I'm a whore too. Yeah. I've been a whore. So you, so you had the idea for fucking you porn before it was a thing. Yeah, sort of, yeah. I guess. But I grew out of thinking that was a good idea, and I went down the path of being in podcasting and getting a lot of hits doing that. And I didn't idea, have to be, I didn't have to be a pornographer to do it. By the way, thank you. By the way. Yeah, but you were kind of a pornographer. A, a, por a yeah. pornographer of marijuana, yeah. I guess. Exploiting, um, to be honest, on that subject, which is a subject for another day because we're running out of time here. Um, Are we? That's a marijuana, um, for fuck's sake. Um, marijuana? Pornographer. I... I don't want to encourage people to take on lifestyle habits that are not good for them that's the stage where i am now and and so if given a choice between sobriety encouraging sobriety and encouraging do whatever the fuck you want i want to encourage people to be sober man i don't think you're going to be your personal best if you're stoned or drunk all the time yeah and i'm not saying you can't be your best if you're moderate with those things but i don't want to encourage encourage full-on debauchery with people 
Well, I think I think it's like with anything, um, you need to have you know some kind of self control with whatever you end up doing. Of course, it, it's very hard. In you life. know, it's no different than with alcohol or even food. Like, I think all of us, you know, we have our own little devices that we know mm-hmm. we overdo. Is your wife going to be okay with everything you said here today? Yeah, well, she is about sure. going on OnlyFans. Every day for a few years for a million dollars a month. She's going to be cool with that. Yeah, she already knows it. <laughs> you already know. She, oh, she's yeah. like, you better yeah, we've had you talks. better do that. She would do that too or what? No. Like you, no, she, she would. No, she has a way. You would. She has a way higher moral, uh, <laughs> moral compass than Dude, I do. My goodness. Okay, man. Well, you know what I want to do here is I want to start wrapping this up because we've been going for over an hour here. And you're like, what are we going to talk about? And what I knew, are we going to talk about I next, knew because Paul? of the way we were in the past, yeah. knowing one another, that there would be plenty of... Um, oh, this is what I actually want to ask you. What's that? What the hell is Copy Who? Okay, so Copy Who is basically... It has something to do with me being influenced by all kinds of different things, including... Johnny Carson on The Tonight Show, Conan O'Brien, David Letterman, Howard. all sorts of comedians. Absolutely. Howard wow. Stern, Alex Jones, oh, okay. Mike David, you fucking motherfucker, fuck you. Even you, you stupid, talented bastard. <laughs> he has, he seriously has influenced my life, so I bring him up like that, and he's been a royal dick in the past, but he has influenced my life. Yeah. There would not have been marijuana radio or Barefoot Radio if not for the influence of Mike David from Red Bar Radio, and that was really? shit 20 years ago. He, he's an, oh, he's shit. a talented fucking sociopath, and I actually do admire him a lot I did for the way he goes that. about what he's doing. You don't know him, but if you look him up, you'll be like, oh, I see how Paul's copying the fuck out of him. That fucking... No, I know exactly. Let me show you, of. close up on copy, the owl is fucking Mike David, and the, um, and the fucking little one next to him is Jules, his wife, and I want my own fucking Jules here. Do you understand what I'm saying? You yeah. want a, you want I mean, a pop? I want my own jewels. You want uh, your own pop? I want my own lady sitting over here, like mixing my video while I do my talented thing. Because I don't know if you noticed, I'm struggling here when I'm talking to you to be like, er, 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 oh, and keeps yeah. keep that flow going. We'll see how it worked out. But I actually had fun talking you to you here today. I want to tell people to hang out for a year. You laughed last week when I was like, season two is coming. You're like, oh, season two. Like, what's that? It, season two means I'm elevating what I'm doing next year, and there's going to be a whole new look here, and I'm going to have more guests, and I'm warming warming up with guests getting you in here. Uh, you and go. so I appreciate you coming in here and talking to me, my friend. Um, even given your dildo aspirations, I still like you. Yeah. Uh, because I admit my own faults in life, and it was an interesting conversation. Keep checking back to see the third wall behind Jesse there. I thought about putting a bong over there, a big display bong. And then I was like, this is not the marijuana show. You should do it. And I didn't want to uh, put that there. A you bong should do it. Put some autographed LEDs by in it. Cottonmouth Kings. Yeah. And put some LEDs in it. We'll see what goes over there. I have a surface behind that TV to put something in. Uh, I will decorate more over there. Yeah. I want to say, copy who is Landia Colossus. The whole house is Landia Colossus. I'm building it to serve this perfect so that all my studio areas like work together Aries? with one another. What's that? Areas? Areas? Yeah, I have uh, this area here. Oh Over on God. the front there, I made a whole new music studio. And downstairs, you've seen that one too with my drum Jesus set down there. Christ. So I have three separate studio areas in my house. And I want to put them all to work. And I want more people here. It's essential for me to get more people in here. I can't succeed and do this alone. So it needs to be people who you are easy find on the eyes. some OnlyFans models. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. I know some of them... Uh, would probably come on here and talk to me because they just adore the attention. So I, I will put beautiful women on here that have different I can views you and stuff. That I know. Uh, is she hot though? Yeah. Am I going to? Uh, we're not talking. Oh wait, no, I don't want to name names right now. Uh, we, we can talk about that afterwards. No, but it, and she would probably debate with you. She more, would more than I would about the OnlyFans thing. Um, she, she's a friend of okay. mine that works at Shotgun. So Willies. she's pro. She's oh. pro only fans. Yeah. How old is she? Uh, I think she's like three years younger than me. Oh, okay. She is she good looking then? Uh huh. Okay. At your age? Uh huh. 
<clears throat> weighs less than you do, I presume. Oh, way less. Okay, I'm just curious. Oh, way less. Just curious. Oh God, do you know what I didn't do that I wanted to do? What? Look, the whole plan was. You see Frank Sinatra on my shirt. Uh -huh. I wanted to play Ocean's Eleven down there, and it hasn't been Ocean's Eleven. It's just been the stupid. Yep. So that was my fuck up for today, man. It's just been on Apple TV the whole I time. I failed Tracy Lee Samsung TV. Tracy Lee Samsung is the name of that TV down there, and there's a reason why it's called Tracy Lee Samsung Did TV. You buy it from a lady named Tracy Lee? No, no. We can talk about that after <laughs> after the show's over too. Ah, oh, put it on record. Oh no, 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 sir. Uh, she might come on here to talk to me eventually. I think, I hope, possibly. Um, Tracy all right, man. Lee. Yeah, Tracy Lee. Question so, mark. I'm Paul, the producer. This is Copy Who. Did I explain well enough to Copy Who? I copy people, dude. Yeah. I take from everyone I want to better my lot in life, and I suggest everyone do the same. You know I'm serious. And so, uh, one of the reasons I like talking to you is because I feel like I can be myself, and you're not yeah. you're not constantly judging me. I appreciate that, dude, for Rizzle and the Nizzle. Well, we've known each other for a really yes long time it's true. now. Jesus Christ. Yeah, a good while now. Yeah. It's a pleasure knowing you, sir. Um, oh, yeah. So, yeah. I always have fun doing these things with good, you. Good, man. So, it's I'll intended be to be fun. It's intended to be the best. All right, everyone. And I always mean it when I do say peace be with you all. Suck. Suck. Dick. <laughs> oh, God. Look, On the OnlyFans. You're crazier than me, dude. What's your OF handle? Uh, I don't know. Okay, what with that. What would my OnlyFans an handle be? Veteran butt plunger. I don't know. Sayonara, <laughs> everyone. <laughs>